Swan Falloon, English version, Li Hongxi. The Falloon emblem is the miniature of the universe. It also has its own form of existence and process of evolution in all other dimensions. So I call it a world, Li Hongxi. On Dafa, Lun Yu. Dafa is the wisdom of the Creator. It is the bedrock of creation, what the heavens, earth, and universe are built upon. It encompasses all things from the utmost minuscule to the vastest of the vast, while manifesting differently at each of the cosmic body's planes of existence. Out of the depths of the cosmic body, the tiniest of particles first appear, with layers upon layers of countless particles following, ranging in size from small to great, reaching all, all the way to the outer planes that humankind knows, those of atoms, molecules, planets and galaxies, and beyond. To that, to what is still larger particles of varying sizes make up lives of very varying sizes as well as the worlds as varying sizes that per that permeate the cosmic body lives at any of the various planes of particles perceive the particles of the next larger plane to the planets in the skies and this is the true at each and every plane. To the lives at each plane of the universe, it seems to go on infinitely. It was Dafa that created time and space, the multitude of lives and species and all of creation, all that it exists owns, owes to it with nothing outside of it. All of these are the tangible expressions at different planes of Dafa's qualities, Shin, Shan, and Ren. However, advanced people's means of exploring space and probing life may be the knowledge gained is limited to certain parts of this one dimension, where human beings reside. At a low plane of the universe, other planets were explored before by you be, before by humans during civilizations predating history yet for all the heights and distance achieved humankind has never managed to depart from the dimensions in which it exists the true picture of the universe will forever elude humankind if a human being is to understand the mysteries of the universe space time and the human body, he must take up cultivation of a true way and achieve true enlightenment, raising his plane of being. Through cultivation, his moral character will ele 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 elevate, elevate, and once he has learned to discern what is truly good from evil and virtue from vice, and he goes beyond the human plane, he will see and gain access to the realities of the universe as well as the lives of other planes and dimensions. While people often claim that their scientific pursuits 
are to improve quality of life, it is te technological competition that drives them. And in the most cases, they have come about only after people have pushed out the, di the divine and abandoned moral codes meant to ensure self-restraint. It was for all these reasons that civilizations of the past many times met with destruction. People's explorations are necessarily limited to this material world and the methods are such that, o that only what has been recognized is studied. Meanwhile, things that are intangible or invisible in the human dimensions, but that do objectively exist and do reveal themselves in real ways in this immediate world, such as spirituality, faith, divine word, and miracles, are treated as taboo for people have cast out the divine. If the human race is able to improve its character, conduct and thinking by grounding these immoral values, it will be possible for civilization to endure and even for miracles to occur again in the human world. Many times in the past, cultures that were as divine as they were human have appeared in this world and helped people to arrive at a true understanding of life and the universe. When people show the appropriate respect and reverence toward Dafa, as it manifests here in the world, in the world, they, their race or their nation will enjoy blessings or honor. It was Dafa, the great way of the universe, that created the cosmic body, the universe, life, and all of creation. Any life that turns away from Dafa is truly corrupt. Any person who can align with Dafa is truly a good person and will be rewarded and blessed with health and happiness. And any cultivator who is able to become one with Dafa is enlightened, one, divine. Li Hongxi, May 24th, 2015. So, this is basically... The table of contents. Lecture one, genuinely guiding people toward high levels. Throughout the entire course of my lectures on the FA and cultivation, I have been responsible to society and students. The results we have received have been good and their impact upon the entire society have, has also been quite good. A few years ago, there were many Qigong masters who thought, who, who taught Qigong, Qigong. All of what they thought belonged to the level of healing and fitness. Of course, I am not saying that their ways of practice were not good. I am only pointing out that they did not teach anything at high level. I also know the Qigong situation throughout the entire country. At present, be it at be it at home or aboard, I am the only person genuinely teaching Qigong towards high levels. Why has no one done such a thing as teaching Qigong towards high levels? It is because this relates to questions of mayor concerns, profound historical reasons, and a wide range of issues, and very serious matters. It is not something that, every, that, that an everyday person can teach. 
for it involves the practice of many Qigong schools. In particular, many of our Qigong participants, partic participants who study one practice today and another tomorrow have already messed up their own bodies. Their cultivation is about to fail, while, other, while others advanced by taking the main road in cultivation. These people are on the side roads. If they practice one way, the other way will interf interfere. If they practice the other way, this practice will interfere. Everything is interfering with them and they can no longer succeed in cultivation. We will straighten out all the matters <clears throat> and by pre preserving the good parts and re removing the bad parts ensure that you are able to cultivate later. However, you must be there to genuinely study the staffa. If you hold up various attachments and common and come to gain supernormal abilities, have your illness cured, listen to some theories, or come with some ill intentions, that will not work at all. As I have mentioned, this is because I am the only person who is doing such a thing. There are not many opportunities for something like this, and I will not teach this way forever. I think that those who can listen to my lectures in person I would say honestly, if you realize in if you will realize in the future that this period of time is extremely pre precious. <clears throat> of course, we we believe in predestined relationships. Everyone sits here all because of predestined relationship. Think about it, everyone. What kind of matter is it that what what kind of matter is it to teach Qigong towards high levels? Isn't this offering salvation to humankind? <laughs> offering salvation to humankind means that you will be truly cultivating and not just healing illness illnesses and keeping fit. Accordingly, genuine cultivation has a higher Qing Qing requirement for students. Everyone sitting here came to learn the Stafa, so you must here conduct yourselves as true participants, and you must give up attachments. If you come to learn the practice and this Stafa with various pursuits, you will not learn anything. I'll tell you the truth. The entire cultivation process for a cultivator is one of, consist of constantly giving up human attachments. In ordinary human society, people compete with, deceive and harm each other for a little personal gain. All of these mentalities must be given up, especially for people who are studying the practice today. These mentalities should be given up even further. I do not talk about healing illnesses here, and neither will, be, will we heal illnesses. As a genuine cultivator, however, you cannot cultivate with an ill body. I will purify your body. The body purification will be done only for those who come to truly learn the practice and the fa. We emphasize one point. If you cannot relinquish the attachment or concern of for illness, we cannot do anything and will be unable to help you. Why is this? It is because there is such a principle of the universe. Ordinary human affairs, according to the Buddha school, all have predestined, predestined relationships. Birth, old age, illness and death exist in this way for everyday people. Because of karma created from past wrongdoings, one has illnesses or tribulations, suffering is repaying a karmic debt, and thus nobody 
can casually change this. Change again means that one would not have to repay the debt after being in debt. And this cannot be done at will. Doing otherwise is the same as committing a bad deed. Some people think that treating patients, curing their illness and improving their health are good deeds. In my view, they have not really cured the illness. Instead of removing them, they have either postponed or transformed the illness. To really dispel such tribulations, karma must be eliminated. If one could truly cure an illness and completely remove such karma, one's level would have to be quite high. One would have already seen a fact. The principle of, an, of ordinary human society cannot be casually violated. In the course of cultivation, a cultivator, out of his or her compassion, can do some good deeds by helping treat diseases and heal others' illnesses or maintain their health. These are permitted. However, one cannot completely heal another people's disease, illnesses. If the cause, if, if the cause of an everyday person's illness were indeed removed, a non-cultivator would walk away without any illness. Once this person steps outside the store, he will he would still be an everyday person. He would still compete for personal profit like everyday people. How can his karma be casually eliminated? It is absolutely prohibited. Why can this be done for a cultivator then? It is because a cultivator is most precious for he or she wants to cultivate. Therefore, Developing this thought is most precious. In Buddhism, people talk about Buddha nature. When a person's Buddha nature emerges, the enlightened beings are able to help him. What does this mean? If you ask me, since I'm teaching the practice at high levels, it involves the, pr the principles of high levels as well as issues of great importance. We see that in this universe, the human life is not created in ordinary human society. The creation of one's actual life is in the space of the universe. Because there are many substances of various kinds in this universe, such substances can, th through their interactions, produce life. In other words, a person's earliest life comes from the universe. The space of the universe is be, be, be benevolent to begin with, with and embodies the characteristic of Shin Shan Ran. At birth, one is assimilated to the characteristics of the universe. Yet, as the number of lives increases, a collective form of social relations develops in which some people may develop selfishness and gradually their level will drop. If they cannot stay at, at this level, they must drop down further. At that level, however, they may again become not so good and not be able to stay there either. They will continue to descend further until in the, in the end they reach this level of human beings. The entire human society is on the same level. From the perspective of su supernormal abilities or of the great enlightened beings, these lives should have been destroyed upon falling to this level. Out of their be involent compassion, however, the great enlightened beings have 
gave them one more chance and constructed this special environment and unique dimension. All of the lives in this dimension are different from those in other dimensions of the universe. The lives in this dimension cannot see the lives in other dimensions or the, true, the truth of this universe. Thus, these human beings are actually lost in a maze. In order to cure their illness or eliminate tribulations and karma, these people must cultivate and return to, the or to their original true selves. This is how all the different cultivation schools view it. One should return to one's original true self. This is the real purpose of being human. Therefore, once a person wants to cultivate, his or her Buddha nature is con cons considered to have come forth. Sh such a thought is most precious. For this person wants to return to his or her original true self and transcend the ordinary human level. Perhaps everyone was here this statement in Buddhism. When one's Buddha nature emerges, it will shake the world of ten directions. Whoever sees it will come to give a hand and help this person out unconditionally. In providing salvation to humankind, the Buddha school does not attach any condition or seek returns, and it will help unconditionally. Accordingly, accordingly we can do many things for students. But for an everyday person who just wants to be an everyday person and to cure his or her illness, it will not work. Some people may think, I cultivate after my illness is cured. There is no precondition for cultivation and one should cultivate if one wants to. Yet some people's bodies have illnesses and some people carry disord disorderly messages in their bodies. Some people have never practiced Qigong. There are also people who have practiced it for several decades and still wonder about at the level of Qi, but without making progress in cultivation. What should be done about this? We will purify their bodies and, and enable them to cultivate towards high levels. There is a transition at the lowest level of cultivation. And this is to purify your body completely. All of the bad things in your mind and the karmic field surrounding your body and the elements that make your body unhealthy will be cleaned out. If they are not cleaned out, how can you, with such an impure, dark body and a filthy mind, cultivate towards a high level? We do not practice chi here. You do not need to practice such low-level things. And we will push you beyond it, making your body reach a state of free of any illness. In the meantime... We will install in your body a system of ready-made mechanisms necessary for laying a foundation at the low level. This way, you will cultivate at a very high level. According to the conventions of, the co of cultivation, there are three levels if qi is included. In genuine cultivation, however, there are all to altogether two major levels, excluding practicing qi. One is in triple world fa, shi jian fa cultivation, while the other is beyond triple world fa, shu shi jian fa cultivation. The cultivation of in, tri in triple world fa and beyond triple world fa are different from the beyond world and the in world in temples, which are theoretical terms. Ours is the genuine trans formation of the human body through cultivation at two major levels. Because in the course 
of in triple world one's body will be constantly purified it will be completely replaced by high energy matter and by by high energy matter when one reaches the highest form of in triple world far the cultivation in beyond triple world far is basically cultivation of a buddha body that body is made of high energy matter and all supernormal super powers will be redeveloped. These are the two major levels to which we refer. We believe in predestined relationships. I do this for everyone sitting here. Right now we have only more than two people. I can, I can also do it for several thousands or more people, even if even over 10,000 people. That is to say, you do not need to practice at a low level. Upon purifying your bodies and moving you up, I will install a complete cultivation system in your body. Right away, you will cultivate at high levels. It will be done, however, only for students who come to genuinely cultivate. You're simply sitting here does not mean that you are a cultivator. These things will be provided as long as you f fundamentally change your thinking. And it, and it is not limited to just these. Later, you will understand what I have given everyone. We do not talk about healing illnesses here either. Rather, we talk about holistically adjusting students' bodies to enable you to cultivate. With an ill body, you cannot develop gong at all. Therefore, you should not come to me for curing illness, and neither will I do such a thing. The primary pur purpose of my coming to the public is to guide people to high levels, to genuinely guide people to high levels. Different levels have different fa. In the past, many Qigong masters said that Qigong has a so-called beginning level, inter in intermediate level, and advanced level. That was all Qi and only something at the level of, pr of practicing Qi. But it was even classified as beginning level, inter intermediate level, and advanced level Qigong. With regard to genuine high-level things, the minds of the majority of our Qigong participants were blank, as they simply did not know about them at all. From now on, all of what we address will be the Fa at high levels. In addition, I will restore a reputation of cultivation in my lectures. I will talk about some unhealthy phenomena in the community of cultivators. I will also address how we should treat and look at such phenomena. Moreover, teaching a cultivation system and far at high levels involves many areas and quite important issues, some of which are even very serious. I would like to point out to, to point these out as well. Some interference in our ordinary human society, especially in the community of cultivators, come from other dimensions. I will also like to make this public. At the same time, I will resolve these problems for students. If these problems go unresolved, you will be unable to cultivate. To fundamentally resolve these issues, we must treat everyone as genuine cultivators. Of course, 
it is not easy to change your thinking right away. You will transform your thinking gradually during the lectures of during the lectures to come. I also hope that everyone will pay attention while listening. The way I teach cultivation is different from the way others teach cultivation. Some people teach it just by talking briefly about the theories of their practice of their practice methods. Next, they connect their messages with you and teach a set of exercises. And that is all. People are already accustomed to this way of teaching a practice. Genuinely teaching a cultivation system requires teaching the Fa or the Tao. In 10 lectures, I will make known all of the high-level principles so that you can cultivate. Otherwise, you cannot cultivate at all. All of what others have thought are things at the level of healing and fitness. If you want to cultivate towards high levels, you will not succeed in cultivation, in cultivation without the guidance of the high level form. It resembles att attending school. If you go to college with elementary school textbooks, you will still be an elementary school pupil. Some people think that they have learned many practices such as this practice or that practice. And they have a pile of graduation cert certif certificates, but their gong still has not made any progress. They think that those are the true essence of Qigong and what Qigong is all about. No, they are only a surface part of Qigong and something at the lowest level. Qigong is not confined to these things as it is as it is cultivation, as well as something very broad and profound. In addition, different fa exists at different levels. Thus, in, it is different from those practices of qi that we know these days, whereby it is the same no matter how much more you learn. For instance, although you have study British elementary school books, American elementary school books, Japanese elementary school books, and Chinese elementary school books. You remain an elementary school pupil. The more low-level Qigong lessons you have taken and the more from them you have absorbed, the more harm you will incur. Your body is already messed up. I must emphasize yet another issue. Our cultivation practice requires teaching both a cultivation method and fa. Some monks in temples, especially those of Zen Buddhism, may have different opinions. As soon as they learn of the teachings of fa, they will be unwilling to listen. Why is that? Zen, Zen Buddhism believes that fa should be not be thought, not be not be taught that fa is not fa. If it is thought and that there is no teachable fa, one can only understand something by your heart and soul. As a result, to this day, Zen Buddhism has not been able to teach any fa. Patriarch Bodhidharma of Zen Buddhism thought such things based upon a statement made by Shakyamuni who said no dharma is definite, definitive. He founded Zen Buddhism based on this statement by Shakyamuni. We consider this cultivation way to be digging into a bull's horn. Why is it said to dig into a bull's horn? When Bodhidharma began to dig into it, he felt that it was quite spacious. When Patriarch, when Patriarch II dug into it, he felt that it was not very spacious. It was still paceable by the time of Patriarch III, but when Patriarch IV, it was already 
but for Patrick Foy was already quite narrow. There was almost no room to move further for Patriarch 5. By the time of Hui Neng, Patriarch 6, it had reached a dead end and could and could move no further. If today you visit Zen Buddhism, Zen Buddhists to study Dharma, you should not ask any questions. If you ask a question, he or she will return around and whack your head with a stick, which is called a stick warning. It means that you should inquire, that you should not inquire, and you should become enlightened on your own. You would say, I came to study because I don't know anything. What should I become enlightened about? Why do you hit me with a stick? This indicates that Zen Buddhism has reached the dead end of the bull's horn, and there is no longer that, and there is no longer anything to teach. Even Bodhidharma stated that his teachings could be passed down to only six generations, after which they would no longer serve any use. Several hundred years have passed, yet there are people today who still hold firmly to the doctrines of Zen Buddhism. What's the actual meaning of Shakyamuni's pronouncement? No Dharma is definitive. Shakyamuni's level was ta ta Tadagata. Many monks later on where Many monks later, on were not enlightened at Shakyamuni's level, to the thinking, to the thinking in his realm of thought, to the real meaning of this professed dharma, or to the actual meaning of what he said. Therefore, people later, on inter, la people later on interpreted in this way or that way with very confusing interpretations. They thought that no Dharma is definitive. Meant that one should not teach it and it would be and, and it would not be Dharma if it thought if thought. Actually, that is not what it means. When Shakyamuni became enlightened under the body and under the body tree, he did not reach the Tadagata level right away. He was also constantly improving himself during the four, 49 years of his Dharma teach. Whenever he improved his level, he looked back and realized that the Dharma he had just thought was all wrong. When he improved again, he discovered that the Dharma he had just thought was wrong again. After he made further progress, he realized again that the Dharma he had just thought was wrong. He constantly ascended in this way during his entire 49 years. Whenever he reached a higher level, he would discover that the Dharma he thought he taught in the past was a very low level in, his, in its understanding. He also discovered that the Dharma at, the, at each level is always uh, the manifestation of the, le of the Dharma at the, that level, that there is Dharma at every energy level, at every level. And that none of them is the absolute truth of the universe. The Dharma at high levels is closer to, to the characteristics of the universe than that lower levels. Therefore, he stated, no Dharma is definitive. In the end, Shakyamuni also proclaimed, I haven't thought, thought any Dharma in my lifetime. Zen Buddhism, again, misunderstood this as meaning there was no Dharma to be taught. By his later years, Shakyamuni had already reached the Tathagata level. Why did he say that he had not thought any Dharma? What issue 
did he actually raise? He was stating, even at my level of Tahalagata, I've seen neither the ultimate truth of the universe nor what the ultimate drama is. Thus, he asked people later on not to take his words as the absolute or unchangeable truth. Otherwise, it would later limit people at or below the Tathagata level, and they would be unable to make breakthroughs towards high levels. Later, people could not understand the real meaning of this, of this sentence and thought it that it th and thought that it taught Dharma is not Dharma. They have understood it in this way. In fact, Chakyamuni was saying that there are different Dharma that there are different Dharma at different levels, and that the Dharma at each level is not the absolute truth of the universe. Yet the Dharma at a given level assumes a guiding role at that level. That is actually the principle that he was talking about. In the past, many people, especially from Zen Buddhism, held this kind of pre, pre, prejudice and an extremely incorrect view. How do you practice and cultivate yourself without being thought and guided? There are many Buddhist stories in Buddhism. Some people may have read about a person who went to heaven. Upon arriving in heaven, he discovered that every word in the Diamond, Diamond Sutra up there was different from that down here. And the meaning was entirely different. How could this Diamond Sutra be different from that in the ordinary human world. There are also people who claim the scripture in this par paradise of ultimate bliss is totally different from that down here. And it's not at all the same thing. Not only are the, the, are the words different, but the implications and the meaning are all different as they've changed. As a matter of fact, this is because the same fire has different transformation and forms of manifestation at different levels, and it can pay different guiding roles for cultivators at different levels. It is known that in Buddhism there, are, there is a booklet called A Tour to Paradise of Ultimate Bliss. It states that while a monk was sitting in meditation, his original soul, Chuanxin, Huanxin, went to paradise of ultimate bliss and saw its screenery, scenery. He spent one day there. When he returned to the human world, six years have already passed. Did he see it? He did, but... But what he saw was not its true state. Why? It is because his level was not high enough. And what he was shown was only the manifestation of Buddha Fa at his level. Because a paradise like that is a manifestation of the Fa's composition, he should not see, see its actual situation. This is what it means when I talk about no Dharma is definitive. Shin Shan Ren is the 
soul criterion to this to discern good and bad people. In Buddhism, people have been discussing what the Buddha Fa is. There are also people who believe that the Dharma stated in Buddhism is the Buddha Fa in its entirety. Actually, it is not. The Dharma that Shakyamuni pro professed 2,500 years ago was only for everyday people at very low level. It was, it was taught to those who had just emerged from a primitive society and still had very simple ways of thinking. Today, it is the Dharma ending age to which he referred. The people of, to of today can no longer cultivate with that Dharma. In the Dharma ending age, even monks with temples have difficulty saving themselves, let alone offering salvation to others. The Dharma Shakyamuni taught in his time was directed at the circumstances. At that time, he did not fully articulate the Buddha Fa that he understood. At his own level, he keep it unchanged forever. It also is also impossible. As society develops, the human mind becomes more complicated, making it no longer easy for people to cultivate it in this way. The Dharma in Buddhism cannot summarize the entire Buddha form, and it and it is and it is only a tiny portion of the Buddha form. There are still many other great cultivation ways in the Buddha school that are being passed down among people. Throughout, this, throughout history, they have been passed down to, single, to a single disciple. Different levels have different fa, and different dimensions have different fa, all, all of which are various manifestations of the Buddha fa in different dimensions and at different levels. Shakyamuni also mentioned that there were 84,000 cultivation ways for cultivating Buddhahood. Buddhism, however, only includes about 10 or more cultivation ways, such as Zen Buddhism, Pure Land, Tian Tai, Huan Yan, and Tantrism. These cannot represent all of the Buddha farm. Shakyamuni himself did not articulate all of his Dharma. He only taught the portion of it of it benefiting people's abilities of comprehension at that time. What is the Buddha for then? The most fundamental characteristics of this universe, Shin Shan Ren, is the highest manifestation of the Buddha for. It is the most fundamental Buddha for. The Buddha Fa manifests at different forms at different levels and assumes different guiding roles at different levels. The lower the level, the more complicated. This characteristic, Shin Shan Ren, is in the microscope cosmic particles of air, rock, wood, soil, iron, and steel, the human body as well as in all matter. In ancient times, it was said that the five elements constitute all things and matter in this universe. They also carry this characteristic, Shin, Shan, Ren. A cultivator can only understand the specific manifestation of the Buddha at the level that his or her cultivation has reached, which is his or her cultivation fruitation status at le and level. Broadly speaking, the Fa is very immense. From the perspective of the very of the very highest level, it is very simple for the Fa resembles a pyramid in form. At the highest point, it can summarize it can be summarized in three words: Shin Shan Ren. It is extremely complicated when 
manifesting at different levels. Take a human being as an example. The, the Tao school consider, considers the human body as a small universe. A person has a, has a physical body, yet a person is not complete, complete with only a physical body. One must also have human temperament, personality, character, and an original soul in order to constitute a complete and independent person with individuality. The same is true with our universe, which has the Milky Way or other galaxies, as well as life and water. All things and matter in this universe are aspects of material existence. At the at the same time, however, it also processes the characteristic Shin Shan Ren. All microscopic particles of matter embody this characteristic. Even the extremely microscopic particles have this property. This characteristic Shin Shan Ren is the Criteration for measuring good and bad in the universe. What's good or bad? It is judged by this. The D that we mentioned in the past is also the same. Certainly, the moral standard in today's society has already changed and become distorted. Now, if someone learns from Li Feng, he or she might be branded mentally ill. But who, in the, but who in the 1950s or 1960s would have called this person mentally ill? The human moral standard is decli declining tremendously and human moral values are de deteriorating. deteriorating daily. People only pursue self-interest and will harm others for a tiny bit of personal gain. They compete and struggle against each other using any means necessary. Think about it, everyone. Will this be allowed to continue? When someone is doing a wrong deed he will not believe it he will not believe it if you point out to him that he is doing a wrong deed that person indeed will not believe that he is doing something wrong some people evalu evaluate themselves with the lowered moral standard because the standard of judgment has changed they consider themselves better than others. No matter how the human moral standard changes, this characteristic of the universe remains unchanged. And it, and it is the sole criterion that distinguishes good people from bad people. As a cultivator, one must then conduct oneself by following the characteristics of the universe rather than the standards of everyday people. If you want to return to the original true self and move up in cultivation, you must conduct yourself according to, the, to this criterion. Uh, to, this criter to, to this criterion. As a human being, you are a good person only if you can follow the universe's characteristics of Shin Shan Ren. A person who, de who deviates from this characteristic is truly a bad person. In the workplace or in society, some people may say that you are, that you are bad. Yet you, can, you may not necessarily be bad. Some people may say that you are good, but you may not really be good. As a cultivator, 
if you assimilate yourself to the characteristic you are one you, you are one who has attained the Tao it's just such a simple principle in cultivating Shin Shan Ren the Tao school emphasizes the cultivation of Shen of Shin Therefore, the Tao school believes in the cultivation of Shin to nurture one's nature. One should tell the truth, do things truthfully, become a truthful person, return to the original true self, and in the end become a true person through cultivation. However, it also includes Ren and Shan, but with an emphasis on the cultivation of Shin. The Buddha school emphasizes cultivating Shan of Shin, Shan, Ren. Because the cultivation of Shan can generate great benevolent compassion, when compassion develops, one will find all beings suffer, suffering and thus develop an aspiration to offer salvation to all beings. <coughs> It also has Shen and Ren, but with an emphasis on the cultivation of Shan. Our Falun Dafa is based upon the highest standard of the universe, Shin, Shan and Ren, all of which we cultivate simultaneously. The system that we cultivate is enormous. Truthfulness, compassion, forbearance. Falun Dafa is good. 